Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.1.2 to the public. iOS 17.1.2 is available around the world at the same time for everyone as long as you're not a beta tester. If you are a beta tester or developer, you won't have this update as you're actually on a newer version. But if you don't have this update, you're on the previous version of iOS 17.1.1 or older, go to your software updates and you'll see it there. Now this was released alongside iPadOS 17.1.2 and macOS 14.1.2. There were no additional firmware updates released for different devices. Now this update came in at 526.4 megabytes. That's on my 15 pro max. It was about the same size on other devices, a little bit larger. If maybe you're on a previous version of iOS 17.1 or something else. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 21 B one zero one. The build number just lets you know you're on the most recent version matching everyone else. As far as Apple is concerned. This update does not have a new modem update in it though. So if you were having connectivity issues or anything else that doesn't seem to be resolved in this update. And with this update, there are no new features. Apple typically leaves those feature updates to things such as point updates. iOS 17.2 will have a bunch of features in it as well. However, typically we have bug fixes and more, but in this update, you can see here, it says this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. They don't even mention bug fixes. So I've gone through and checked a couple different bugs, but they say nothing about a Wi-Fi bug that's fixed the wallpaper fading bug being fixed whatsoever. So if we go down here and swipe up the wallpaper still fades from time to time, you can see that sort of dims after just about a half a second slide up and it dims. So that's something they haven't resolved in this update. It doesn't appear they fixed the notification bug as well. You'll see it just sort of jumps in and isn't working properly. So definitely some odd issues here. They haven't mentioned that they've fixed the wireless charging issue or just charging issues in general in GM cars or others. And that's something that seems to be an issue with this update. So iOS 17.1.1 fixed an issue with BMW cars sort of getting so hot while they're wireless charging that they were, they were actually ruining the NFC chip within the iPhone itself. That update was fixed, but then caused issues with things such as GM cars. I've seen some Lincolns with issues and others have mentioned it as well. It still gets very hot in my Audi as well when I'm wireless charging. So it doesn't seem they've worked all those bugs out. Also that assistive access bug is still there. So for those of you that are curious about that, I did have some people message me if you're in accessibility and you're actually using assistive access, and then you go into your contacts and try to call someone, the button just doesn't work at all. I've reported it in feedback, but that's still an issue for this. So it seems this is just a security fix for some reason, but Apple has updated their security website with what they fixed. So if we go to Apple's security release website, scroll down. You can see here we have Safari 17.1.2, iOS 17.1.2 and iPadOS 17.1.2 along with macOS Sonoma. If we go into this, scroll down, there's just two fixes here for WebKit. That's basically the underlying code that is for Safari and it says what it's available for. So all of the current iOS 17 supported devices and the impact or issue was processing web content may disclose sensitive information. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.7.1. It says to fix this or the description and out of bounds read was addressed with improved input validation. Again, if we scroll down, it's basically the same sort of bug processing web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.7.1 to fix it. A memory corruption vulnerability was addressed with improved locking. So these are things they've fixed. They've fixed the same issues in macOS Sonoma, but they did patch some bugs in that. And once I figure that out, I may talk about it in a separate video. The odd thing about this is Apple promised a new way for security updates where we wouldn't need a point update, but rather a rapid security response. And that was in your automatic updates. So in automatic updates, we still have that enabled, but this should have been a rapid security response. You would think since it's just patching a couple things. Now, Apple did release a couple new things today, as far as software, such as final cut pro motion and compressor. So as you can see here, they release those on the app store. If you have a Mac and you use those with some significant updates, if you're using Apple Silicon, especially an M one max ultra or M three max or ultra once that's released as well. Also, they updated their website. If we go back here, 
with the award winners for the App Store Awards. So the best of 2023 apps and games. So if we go into that, you can see all of the latest awards here and some of the apps that have won that, such as All Trails, the Makeup, hopefully I'm saying that properly, Photomator, which is a great app, Mubi, Smart Gym, as well as many others. So lots of different things have won here, some great games, some great apps. The one I use in particular is Photomator, but all of them seem to be pretty good. Let me know your favorites of the year in the comments below. Now I did mention Apple updated music with replay 2023 with more music. Some people are now seeing splash screens for that as well. Once they go into this. So that's something I thought I'd mention if you haven't seen it already and you use Apple music. The same updates and security updates apply to iPad OS. And as far as performance goes, well, it really doesn't feel any different than iOS 17.1.1. Everything is the same as far as scrolling, whether that's on this phone, the iPhone 14 pro max or anything else, it just feels basically the same promotion is responding the same as far as I can tell so far. And one thing I wanted to mention with performance is I did have it lock up initially. When I went into Safari, I was scrolling through here. I'd go in, it just wouldn't respond to touch. It would lock up. So there's definitely some bugs that they're working out and must be waiting until iOS 17.2 for as far as the overall thermals or temperature. Well, it doesn't seem to be warm at all. And we'll take a look at a couple different devices here, both running the same version, 14 pro max and 15 pro max. On the 15 Pro Max at the hottest point, you'll see we have about 85 degrees Fahrenheit or so. On the 14 Pro Max, it's a little bit cooler. It seems to be around 79 degrees Fahrenheit. As for Celsius, we have about 30.3 degrees Celsius. And on the 14 Pro Max, about 27 degrees Celsius or so. So that's not particularly warm. And I did run Geekbench twice on the 15 Pro Max. We'll check that in just a moment. Now, as far as battery life and battery health, let's take a look at that. Now, this is my 15 Pro Max. I haven't used full time, but I have my regular one here with the beta on it. I can share with you. And I'm starting to see some people say that their 15 Pro Max that they got on launch day is starting to actually show that it's degraded battery down to 99%. If we go into settings, go to general, then about you'll see this phone has 57 cycles on it. And if we go back to the overall battery, take a look at battery health and charging, I'm at 100%. Some people, like I said, are starting to see that drop though. That depends on a lot of different things, how you use it, how often you charge it and much more, but I haven't used 17.1.2 enough yet to determine what the battery life is like. We'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up as we'll have a couple days to actually try it out. Now today I've had one hour and 14 minutes of screen active time, three hours and four minutes of screen idle time and used 25% of my battery. iOS 17.2 beta four has not been great as far as battery the day before just three hours and 13 minutes and about 65% of the battery was used. So hopefully iOS 17.1.2 fixes most of those issues. And if we go here on this device, again, battery, battery, health and charging 100%. And then the last 10 days, I've just been using it while actually after installing this update. So we'll use it over the next couple of days and see what it's like. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1.2, if you're on iOS 17.1.1 or before, it's definitely worth installing. I don't think you'll see any differences as far as performance or anything else, but don't expect it to fix any bugs as it seems to still have all the issues we've had before. As far as iOS 17.2 and when to expect that, well, I would expect iOS 17.2 RC or release candidate probably next Tuesday or so. Then a final release of iOS 17.2, probably around the 11th. Last year we had it release on the 13th, so it makes sense that it would be around the second week of December. Then we'll probably have iOS 17.3 beta one and nothing probably until the second or third week of January, like we have every year. So that's typically what Apple does as far as a release schedule. As far as benchmarks, I did run it twice on this because the first results were sort of low, but it was processing a lot in the background. If we take a look at the history here, you can see the two times I ran it this time around, I had 2,967 for single core, 7,061 for multi-core compared to the previous time. You'll see it's bumped up a little bit. I would expect this to increase. And again, we can check this on the weekend after it's done processing in the background. You want to give it a couple days to do that, finish up whatever it's doing, but it seems to be performing. Okay. However, I did have that lockup in Safari I mentioned. Let me know your experience on iOS 17.1.2 so far, or if you're running the beta 17.2 beta four, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.